<clears throat> Welcome to everybody in today's meet. Yesterday, we had a discussion on the importance of the foundation day of the Ramakrishna Matan mission. Yesterday, we have completed 125 years of Ramakrishna Matan mission, which is a very good news, successfully running throughout the world with more than around 200 centers all around the world and along with private centers in various cities and villages. And yesterday we kept the theme, serving God in man, that what was Swamiji came to preach to the modern world through his practical Vedanta. And that is what Swell has been reading over the over the uh, many meets, over many classes. He has been taking beautiful classes on Vedanta. And we have been continuing with the lives of Swamiji, Thakur and Ma, teachings of uh, the Holy Trial. I was reading uh, personally from the book, The Life of Swami Vivekananda by his Eastern and Western disciple. I will continue from that book. Today, I will be starting a new chapter, Guru and Disciple. Lastly, we have finished the chapter at the touch of the master. Beautiful chapter, how Vive Noren became Vivekananda uh, with, the, with the gentle touch of Sri Ramakrishna, how he came to uh, Sri Ramakrishna. We, we, we read in details about those meetings. Today, we'll start <clears throat> the chapter Guru and Disciple, which is actually the tradition of India, which is also an inspiration for the whole world. Before starting my uh, section, let us chant the prana mantra of Sri Ramakrishna. Om Sthapakaya Cha Dharmasya Sarva Dharma Swarupine Avatar Varishtaya Ramakrishna Yatenamaha. We bow down to Sri Ramakrishna. Starting from the chapter Guru and Disciple. During his training with Sri Ramakrishna, the story of Norin's life is to be told in terms of ideas and realizations. Wonderful was the relationship between guru and disciple, a full account of which can never be given. So close, so deep, always think of them as one soul. Ramakrishna Vivekananda, for thought of the one involves awareness of the other. Theirs was a spiritual relationship without a touch of the worldliness. From the moment Noren came to the master and asked, Sir, have you seen God? Began the spiritual growth of the disciple, ending in his illumination. The climax was reached when the spirit of the master, before he left the body, descended upon the disciple. This relationship served a great impersonal purpose. The revival of the religion of the Vedas and the preaching of a new gospel suited to the needs of the modern world. Great teachers who have themselves realized the highest truth when they came in contact with the fit disciple are eager to impact, impart that truth. Sri Ramakrishna recognized Noren's spiritual potentialities. Nevertheless, Noren needed time to ripen, as we see from his terror of losing his individuality when the master tried to put him into Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Referring the master tried to put him into Nirvikalpa Samadhi, referring humorously to this incident, later on one occasion, Ramakrishna said to Noren, a man died and became an evil spirit, anxious to have a companion. Whenever the spirit heard that someone had passed away, it would at once go to that place hoping to get a companion. But every time it returned disappointed because the soul had been liberated through some act or others of pity. Such is the case with me. As soon as I saw you, I thought I had a friend, but you too said that you had your father and mother at home. I am therefore living alone without a companion, like the spirit in the story. Sri Ramakrishna's love for Noren was so deep that if Noren failed to come to Dakshineshwar for some days, he would become disconsolate. He would weep and pray to the Divine Mother, begging her to make him come and refusing to be comforted. In the meantime, the other devotees did not understand, nor did Noren. Sometimes he regarded Sri Ramakrishna as an old man subject to hallucination. At other times, he was overcome by the master's affection and lovingly responded to it. It was really the master's love which enabled Noren to hold on until he could appreciate him intellectually. Something held him, as it were. As Noren said at that time, it is his love for me that binds me to him. Once Narendra did not appear at Dakshineshwar for several days and Sri Ramakrishna was much disturbed, one day during this period, two devotees, 
Ram Dayal and Babu Ram, later Shami Premananda, came to see the master. Sri Ramakrishna asked Ram Dayal about Narendra and said, well, he, was, he has not come here for a long time. I long to see him. Will you please ask him to come here soon? You won't forget it. The visitors remained there for the night. About 11 o'clock, when everyone had retired to bed, Sri Ramakrishna, with his clothes under his arm, suddenly came to them and said to Ramdayal, Well, are you asleep? No, sir, replied Ramdayal, and both he and Babu Ram at once sat up. Look here, please tell Norin to come. I feel as if somebody were wringing my heart like a wet towel, said Sri Ramakrishna, twisting his cloth to give force to his words. Ramdal, who was familiar with Sri Ramakrishna's childlike simplicity, consoled him in various ways and assured him that he would console him in various ways. Persuade Narin to come to Dakshineshwa. The same scene was repeated several times during the night and the two devotees could not but be astonished and puzzled by Ramakrishna's eagerness to see Narendra. Another devotee of Sri Ramakrishna, Vaikuntanath Sanyal, once found the master very restless on account of the prolonged absence of Narendra. Vaikuntha said later, the master was that day full of praise for Narendra. Talking about him made him so desirous of seeking him that he was completely overwhelmed and could no longer control himself. He hurried to the adjacent veranda and cried out, Mother, dear, I cannot live without seeing him. When he returned, he said to us in a voice full of grief, I have wept so much and yet Narendra has not come. My heart is being squeezed as it were. So excruciating is the pain at not seeing him, but he does not care. He left the room again, but soon returned and said, an old man pining and weeping for the boy, what will people think of me? You are my own people. I do not feel ashamed to confess it before you, but how will others take it? I cannot control myself, but his joy was correspondingly great when Norin came. At one time, when the devotees were celebrating, the master's birthday at Dakshineshwa and the beloved disciple did not come until noon. He asked about him again and again. When Noreno finally appeared and bowed down before him, the master leaned on his shoulder and fell into deep samadhi. When he returned to normal consciousness, he fed and carried Noren. Often the most sight of Noren would send the master into samadhi. Once, when he had not seen him for some time, he went to meet him at the landing cart at Dakshineshwa. Touching the disciple's face, he began to chant the most holy word of the Vedas and went into Samhati. I was reading from the book Life of Swami Vivekananda by his Eastern and Western disciple from the chapter Guru and Disciple. We have seen how much love Sri Ramakrishna possessed for Narendra, later Swami Vivekananda. If he could not see Narendra, he would feel ex extensively, he would feel that I am missing somebody in my companion. And as he said, Sri Ramakrishna needed a companion, which Narendra fulfilled in later life, I have seen, to fulfill Ramakrishna's work in later life through the organization Ramakrishna Matan Mission, which has been continuing till now in various parts of the world, carrying the message of harmony that Sri Ramakrishna preached, carrying the message of God realization, and carrying the message that God is nothing but he is living within every beings of this universe. That is the message Sri Ramakrishna Matan Mission is carrying. That is the message Sri Ramakrishna taught to Vivekananda and what Vivekananda taught to the world. Amra ebar paraborti speaker the gache ek ek kore jabo. Amra aim hurte chole jabo. Shridhar tur gache. Shridhar tur theke amra Bhagavad Gita shunbo. We will listen the English translation of the Bhagavad Gita along with explanation of Swami Ranganathananda ji, the universal message of the Gita. Shridhar tur will read from this beautiful book. Shiddhartho, Shiddhartho, 
হ্যালো সিদ্ধার্থ তুমি পড়তে পারো সিদ্ধার্থ শোনা যাচ্ছে today i am reading from path of human life parvati nirvati audible ache to yes siddhartho you are audible you can continue Having said this, Sankara gives a comprehensive philosophy of life at the human stage of evolution with a view to make human society move on an even keel. That blessed Lord having projected this universe from within himself, desirous of his maintenance in good order, projecting Prajapatis like Marcial and others in the beginning imparted to them the Vedic message of Parvatri or actions and projectings also like sankara sanananda and sanatana and sant kumar imparted to them the philosophy characterized by nivaratri or inward meditation characterized by spiritual knowledge and renunciation sankara sanananda sanatana and sanat kumara are called the four kumras internal children of the spirit who are honored in indian literature as children of the supreme divine untouched by worldliness the dharma or philosophy taught in the vedas is of a twofold nature characterized by parvati outside action and nivrutti inward contemplation meant for even the stability of the world which are meant to ensure true abhyada socio economic welfare nishtas of spiritual freedom of all beings both actions and meditations are needed for human well being if only one or the other is there there will be no held individual or social see the wonderful insight the comprehensive wisdom of the ancient indian sage through parvati you establish a welfare society through the improvement of your economy and the political system to nivrutti you achieve what we will call today a value oriented life that comes from humanity inner spiritual dimensions otherwise plenty of wealth power and everything else you may have through parvati but only parvati and no nivrutti society will be right in the short run but in the long run it will be in trouble the whole of modern western civilization today is in trouble because there is no emphasis on nivrutti there is emphasis only on parvati work and work earn more and earn money but remain inwardly poor and poorer until one becomes a nervous wreck many people are suffering thus in the modern world i often quote the german philosopher popian hor from his book the world as will i the world as will an idea mind you he told this about 130 years ago and what he said that is absolutely true today he said what man achieve security and welfare now that they have solved all other problems they become problems to themselves how literally true is this for modern man in this modern age even in our own country there is endless pursuit of money power and pleasure and the result is the creation of widespread hallucination and increasing violence that is the this is not the way to maintain a healthy human society the second element nivrutti is lacking so sankara says pranaram sas adhya sod nidrashan hetu a philosophy of life which integrates social welfare and spiritual freedom through actions and meditation there is one point to be mentioned in this context udaya after abhi means welfare abhi means together not alone it is an important prefix 
to add to this particular expression that means that no socio economic development can come without cooperative interviewer there is need for coordination team spirit to create a healthy society if each one fight against the other there will be no prosperity social peace is absolutely essential cooperation is essential teamwork is essential all that is emphasized by that one word of we that is the only one value which we have not assimilated enough in our society in india in recent centuries today we have to learn that lessons we have a developed a public spirit all our villages can become heavens tomorrow if our people know how to work together we have not learnt if yet and so our cooperative societies often fail if there is no cooperative societies how can we make a success of our cooperative movement thank you thank you <clears throat> thank you siddharth siddharth was reading from the book universal message of bhagavad gita by swami ranganath ananda ji thank you siddharth for beautiful insights and the practicality and the importance to work together in all sectors lying the underlying message of the advaita vedanta of oneness uh, thank you siddharth and now i will go to science question sian yesterday raised a beautiful question and which is very relevant i will try to answer in swami ji's <clears throat> through swami ji's philosophy swami ji's teachings that some uh, sian asks that <clears throat> we are facing a terrible time all of mankind especially in india so sian said that just opposite his house <clears throat> sorry few members of the family were seen to be taken by the ambulance to the hospital and he felt uh, added tension that uh, uh, from his own perspective that i may be the next uh, number or my family members may be the next number so this stress is working within all of us more or less within all beings so how to overcome this stress this stress of fear this is a very important and pertinent question i would like to answer as swami vivekananda often writes when india was going going through tough time you can remember when swami vivekananda was in the west in fact in uh, america at that time the freedom fighting struggle was going on in india maybe in the initial stages but uh, that time almost all uh, citizens of the india were in great trouble the, uh, the britishers were almost uh, killing people and they were uh, demolishing the culture cultural sentiments Swami Vivekananda often referred to, to these things and he often said that the only way for a spiritual seeker to combat this type of situation is that you have to think yourself as the atman often uh, today i was only reading he was saying uh, he was uh, writing a letter to his brother disciples uh, in, in kolkata belur he was writing that if you think yourself as the atman which is actually beyond this body and mind which is one with this whole universe you this feeling of uh, the death this feeling of fear that will that will automatically vanish swami vivekananda says day and night you must think yourself as the spirit only then you will be able to raise your standard so what swami vivekananda says he says what uh, religion does is from a, it turns from a brute to a man and a man into a god that's what is the purpose of religion so how to raise our standard to that divinity <clears throat> is thinking ourselves as always atma who is free from all these bondages swami vivekananda says that this birth and death is of the body as our shastra say it is of the mind but it is not of the atman atman is beyond beyond this often when we refer or often when we suffer if we see the suffering it is because of the worldly suffering we don't suffer because uh, because of somebody else's suffering we suffer on account of our own fear but maybe i will die or something will happen to me when this this concept of me as per swami ji comes when you think ourselves as particular body and mind limited by a particular space and time as so well <clears throat> in the previous talk uh, in the advaita vedanta has told that what we perceive uh, actually uh, in the universe through the senses is actually not the actual perception what we perceive is through the senses what the senses show us we we perceive it to be true but actual reality is beyond it it is in the background which is actually manifesting itself through the senses so our purpose is to go to that uh, particular reality 
which is beyond this body and mind. If you, Swamiji says, if you think yourself as the spirit, then you don't think about your personal body and mind. Your, your expansion, your thinking expansions to a great large. You identify yourself with the whole of mankind. And in that case, when the individuality goes into the wholesome, then you don't think about what I will lose or what my family members will lose. But you think, oh, what I can give. As uh, Swami Ranganathanandaji, as I often say, Swami Ranganathan when he used to, to just before uh, I was speaking, Siddhartha read from the book. So Swami Ranganathanji wrote that beautiful book. Swami Ranganathanji's approach was fantastic. When uh, he used to uh, he used to say that when I uh, meditate, what is the approach? When I meditate, I see only peace within, complete peace, inside peace. And when I uh, open my eyes, my attitude is, what can I do for you? whichever person he can see. And Swami Sarvapyanandaji says, they see our condition. It is just exactly opposite. When we close our eyes for meditation, we only see our mind is roaming here and there, no peace. And when we open our eyes, what we, our approach is what you can do for me, not what I can do for you. So this approach has to be changed. And what is the way of changing? Swami Vivekananda says, think yourself at the Atman. Think yourself as the one with the universe, the whole beings of the universe. When you think yourself, when you expand yourself to this level, then you don't care about your limited body and mind and what it is going to suffer because you know by nature you are not that. So that uh, that is uh, what we have to uh, stick by and that we have to make ourselves remember day and night, every hour, every minute, as far as possible. That was the main message of Swami Vivekananda through Vedanta. So we'll be continuing from Vedanta. To conclude, I will say to Sayan, that if you want to move out of this stress, is that you have to see a bit less of newspaper, a bit less of uh, uh, the television channels, uh, and a bit more of japa and meditation, and a bit more of prayer, not individual holistic prayer, so that my family can get rid of this, my member can get rid of this, that rather the whole of mankind may get rid of this. That is the prayer that we should be doing in our inner hearts. And if you give more to contemplation of spiritual life, more meditation, which is actually this time you can do because this time uh, many of the outside work has been stopped. So I think meditation and japa is very important nowadays. Maharaj is also saying, the monks of the Ramakrishna Math, to intensify your spiritual life. This type of opportunity is you will get maybe very less in coming days. So if you can pray, I think that is the best thing you can do. And if you can be at peace, that is the best thing you can offer to yourself and to the society at large. If you are not at peace, Whatever disease will happen to you, it will increase. But if you are at peace, at least if your mind is in peace, at least you can fight that disease peacefully with mental strength. So the, I hopefully I have tried to give a, a science answer from Swamiji's vision. Uh, anyway, now Amra Abhavad Padabhati speaker er kache chole yabo. Amra jabo Amader Shonge. Amader Shonge ache Shomita. Shomita is a new member to our group. Shomita, Amader Sri Sri Maher kichu katha banglay pore shonabe Shomita. হ্যাঁ আমি কোলপাক রামকৃষ্ণ মিশ্র থেকে প্রকাশিত সীমা ভাষ্য থেকে একটুখানি অংশ পড়ে শোনাচ্ছি জব ধ্যানে কার্যকারিতা সম্পর্কে মা বিভিন্ন সময় ভক্তদের বলেছেন জব টপ কি জানো ও তারা ইন্দ্রিয় তিন্দ্রিয়গুলোর প্রভাব কেটে যায় আর একদিন তিনি বলেছিলেন জব ধ্যান সব যথাসময় আলস্য ত্যাগ করে করতে হয় অন্যত্র বলেছিলেন রোজ পনেরো বিশ হাজার জব করতে পারে তাহলে হয় আগে করুক না হয় তখন বলবে তবে একটু মন দিয়ে করতে হয় তা তো নয় কেউ করবে না কেবল বলে কেন হয় না কাজকর্ম করবে বই কি কাজে মন ভালো থাকে তবে জব ধ্যান প্রার্থনা বিশেষ দরকার অন্তত সকাল সন্ধ্যায় একবার বসতেই হয় ওটি হল যেন নৌকার হাল সন্ধ্যাকালে একটু বসলে সমস্ত দিন ভালো মন্দ কি করলাম না করলাম তার বিচার আছে তারপর গতকালের মনের অবস্থার সঙ্গে আজকের অবস্থা তুলনা করতে হয় পরে জব করতে করতে ইষ্টমূর্তি ধ্যান করতে হয় কাজের সঙ্গে সকাল সন্ধ্যা জব ধ্যান না করলে কি করছো না করছো বুঝবে কি করে ধ্যান জপের একটা নিয়মিত সময় রাখা খুব দরকার জনৈক ভক্ত দীক্ষার পর বাড়ি ফেরার সময় মাকে জিজ্ঞাসা করেন মা উপায় কি মা ঘরে কুলঙ্গিতে রাখা একটি ঘড়ি দেখিয়ে বলেন ওই ঘড়ি যেমন টিক টিক করছে ঠিক তেমনি নাম করে যাও তাতেই সব হবে আর কিছু করতে হবে না 
গোয়ালপাড়া তেরো বছরের জনৈক ব্রহ্মচারী বালক মায়ের কাছে দীক্ষা প্রার্থনা করলে গোলাপ মা তাতে প্রবল বাধা দেন তার অল্প বয়সের জন্য মা সে কথা শুনে বলেন গোলাপের কথা দেখো না বালককালে যা ভালো করে শেখে তা কি ভোলে কখনো এখন থেকে যা পারে করুক না পরে তো আমি আছি দীক্ষার পর বালকটিকে ঠিক মতো জব করতে দেখে বলছেন এই তো এটি আর মনে থাকবে না থাকবে পরে যেমন আবশ্যক সব সময় মতো আবার দেখিয়ে দেব থ্যাংক ইউ খুব সুন্দর ছোট্ট করে মায়ের কিছু কথা আমাদের শোনালো এবং জব ধ্যানের যে আধ্যাত্মিক গুরুত্ব সেটিও শ্রী শ্রী মায়ের কথা থেকে পড়লো সৌমিতা আমরা আগামী দিনেও শুনব শ্রী শ্রী মায়ের আরো কথা সৌমিতার থেকে আপাতত আমরা যাব সুজিতের কাছে সুজিত আমাদের শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণ জীবনী থেকে পড়ছিল সুজিত আমাদের সেখান থেকে পড়ে শোনাবে একটু সুজিত আমাদের খুব সুন্দর শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণের জীবনীর বিভিন্ন অঙ্গ থেকে পড়ে শোনাচ্ছিল এবং আমাদেরও খুব ইন্টারেস্ট জাগছিল শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণের জীবন পড়তে পড়তে এবং সুজিতের হ্যাঁ শোনা যাচ্ছে সুজিত তুমি বলো হ্যাঁ আমার বলতেও খুব ভালো লাগে আমি বলতে বলতে হারিয়ে যাই মাঝে মধ্যে বেশি বলে ফেলি হ্যাঁ এতটাই মগ্ন হয়ে যাই পড়তে পড়তে গত রবিবার আমরা আত্মনিবেদনের ভাব ছিল যে যখন যে কোনো কার্য করিতেন মাতাকে না জানাইয়া কখনোই তাহাতে নিযুক্ত হইতেন না তিনি কিন্তু কখনো কোনো দ্রব্য প্রার্থনা করেন নাই তাহার প্রয়োজনও বুঝিতেন না এবং অপ্রয়োজন অনুমান করিতে পারিতেন না এতদিন তিনি দেখিলেন যে তাহার পঞ্চবটি বেড়া ভাঙিয়া গিয়াছে তিনি মনে মনে চিন্তা করিলেন যে এ কথা কাহাকে বলি এবং কে বা আমার কথা রক্ষা করিবে ভর্তা ভারী বলিয়া একজন ওই উদ্যানের মালি ছিল এই ব্যক্তি পরমহংসদেবকে চিনিয়া ছিল সে একদিন পরমহংসদেবকে জিজ্ঞাসা করিয়াছিল যে পৃথিবীতে উচ্ছিষ্ট হয় নাই কি পরমহংসদেব বলিয়াছিলেন যে ব্রহ্মবিজ্ঞান এ পর্যন্ত উচ্ছিষ্ট হয় নাই এবং কখন হইবার নহে ভর্তাভারী তদবধি তাহার প্রতি অনুরক্ত হইয়াছিল এই উচ্ছিষ্টের কথা আমরা পরেও তাহার নিকট শুনিয়াছি তিনি বলিতেন যে বেদ পুরাণ শাস্ত্রাদি ঋষি মুনির মুখ বিগলিত হইয়াছে সুতরাং উচ্ছিষ্ট কিন্তু ব্রহ্মবিজ্ঞান বাক্যাতীত অবস্থার কথা তাহা আবার স্বপ্নবধ বোধ হয় লোককে কোন মতে প্রকাশ করিয়া বলা যায় না যাহার হয় সেই বুঝিতে পারে পরমহংসদেব ভর্তা ভারীকে আপন মনের কথা দুই একটা বলিতেন পঞ্চবটির বেড়ার কথা তাহাকেই বলিয়াছিলেন কিন্তু সে সামান্য ভৃত্য কোথায় কি পাইবে তর জন্য কিছুই করিতে পারে নাই পঞ্চবটির বট বৃক্ষ মূলে রামকৃষ্ণদেব কি হইবে বলিয়া চিন্তা করিতেছিলেন এমন সময় গঙ্গাতে বান আসিল বানের সঙ্গে এক বোঝা বাঁকারি এবং আর এক বোঝা এক মাপের কতগুলি বাঁশের ফুটি আসিয়া পরমহংসদেবের সম্মুখে ডুবিয়া গেল রামকৃষ্ণদেব তাহা দেখিতে পাইয়া ভর্তা ভারীকে তৎক্ষণাৎ বলিলেন ভর্তা ভারী আনন্দে বিহল হইয়া একেবারে লম্ফন প্রদান পূর্বক জলে পড়িল এবং ডুব দিয়া বাঁকারি এবং ফুটিগুলিকে উপরে উত্তোলন করিল ভর্তা ভারী আপনি উহা দ্বারা পঞ্চবটির বেড়া বন্ধন করিয়া দিল আশ্চর্যের বিষয় এই যে বেড়া সংস্কারের জন্য যে যে দ্রব্যগুলি প্রয়োজন ছিল তৎসমুদয় তন্মধ্যে পাওয়া গিয়েছিল কর্মহংসদেব এই ঘটনাতে বিশেষ আনন্দিত হইয়াছিলেন তিনি মনে মনে চিন্তা করিয়াছিলেন যে লোকে আমায় পাগল বলে কিন্তু আমি মাকে দেখিতে পাই কথা বলি তিনি ও কত কি বলেন এ সকল কি মিথ্যা হম দর্শন করি ভালো অর্ধ পরীক্ষা করিয়া দেখা যাক এই প্রকার স্থির করিয়া ভাবিতে লাগিলেন যে কিরূপ পরীক্ষা করা যাইবে কিন্তু তখন কিছুই মনে আসিল না একদিন তিনি গঙ্গা স্নান করিতে গিয়াছেন এমন সময় রামধন বলিয়া রাসমনির একজন অতি প্রিয় কর্মচারী সেই স্থান দিয়া গমন করিতেছিল 
রামধন পরমহংস দেবের প্রতি নিতান্ত বিরূপ ছিল এমন কি কখনো কথা কহিত না পরমহংস দেব রামধনকে দেখিয়া মনে মনে মাকে বলিলেন মা তুমি যদি সত্য হও তাহলে রামধনকে আমার নিকটে বন্ধুর ন্যায় এখন এনে দাও তবে জানবো যে তুমি আমার কথা শুনো আর সকলই সত্য বলে ধারণা হবে এই কথা মনে হইবা মাত্র রামধন সহসা রামকৃষ্ণের প্রতি নিরীক্ষণ করিয়া তাহার নিকট নাবিয়া আসিল এবং মৃদুস্বরে বলিল ভট্টাচার্য মহাশয় কালীর সাক্ষাৎ পাইয়া থাকো ভালো তা অত বাড়াবাড়ি করবার আবশ্যক কি এই কথা বলিয়া রামধন চলিয়া গেল রামকৃষ্ণের যদিও এখনই উন্মত্ত তার অনেক সাম্য হইয়াছিল কিন্তু সময়ে সময়ে অধীর হইয়া পড়িতে যখন কম্প হইত তখন পাঁচজনে ধরিয়া রাখিতে পারিত না এই নিমিত্ত চিকিৎসাদি বন্ধ করা হয় নাই বৈদ্যরা বাইরক সাব্যস্ত করিয়া নানাবিধ তৈল মর্দন করাই দিন স্নিগ্ধ কারক ও বায়ুনাশক ঔষধি সেবন করানো হইত এবং কেহ কেহ স্ত্রী সহবাস করিতে পরামর্শ দিত স্ত্রী সহবাস সম্বন্ধে তাহার বিশেষ আপত্তি ছিল বিবাহের পর কার্যানুরোধে তিনি স্ত্রীর মুখাবলোকন করিতে পান নাই তদনন্তর তাহার অবস্থা পরিবর্তন হইয়া গেল সেই সময় তিনি প্রকৃতিকে সকলের উৎপত্তির কারণ জ্ঞানে মাতৃ সম্বোধন করিয়া ফেলিয়াছিল তাহার তদবধি ধ্রুব জ্ঞান হইয়াছিল যে স্ত্রী মাতৃ শক্তির অংশ অতএব শক্তিতে গমন করিলে মাতৃহরণ আপনার সংগঠিত মাতৃহরণ অপরাধ সংগঠিত হইয়া যাইবে মন্দিরের লোকেরা এ কথা জানিত এবং তাহারা সেই জন্য তাহাকে পূর্ণ পাগল বলিয়া গণনা করিত স্ত্রী সহবাস না করে যখন তার উন্মত্ততার কারণ বলিয়া স্থির হইল তখন হৃদয় মুখোপাধ্যায় গোপনে এ সম্বন্ধে অনেক উপদেশ প্রদান করিতে আরম্ভ করিল কিন্তু সে কথায় তাহার মন চঞ্চল করিতে পারে নাই কথায় যখন কার্য হইল না তখন হৃদয় মুখোপাধ্যায় ঠাকুরবাটির এক প্রৌড়া পরিচারিকাকে দশ টাকা পুরস্কার স্বীকার করিয়া পরামর্শ দেবের পশ্চাৎ নিযুক্ত করিয়া ছিল এই পরিচারিকা কোথা হইতে একটি যুবতী কামিনী সকলের অজ্ঞাত সারে পরমহংস দেবের স্বয়ং দিয়ে আনিয়া উপস্থিত করিয়া দিল পরমহংস দেব সেই স্ত্রীরোগকে দেখিয়া অমনি তথা হইতে স্থানান্তরে প্রস্থান করিলেন এবং হৃদয়কে যথোচিত তিরস্কার করিলেন এই রূপে কিয়ত দিবস অতীত হইয়া গেল একদা কলিকাতা প্রসিদ্ধ কবিরাজ গঙ্গাপ্রসাদ ছেড়ের নিকট পরমহংস দেব হৃদয়ের সম্ভাবিবাহারে আগমন করিলেন তথায় জনৈক পূর্বাঞ্চলের পণ্ডিত কবিরাজ উপস্থিত ছিলেন গঙ্গাপ্রসাদ বায়ুরোগ নির্ণয় করিয়া পূর্ব হইতে তৈলাদি ব্যবস্থা করিয়াছিলেন সেই পণ্ডিত পরমহংস দেবকে দেখিয়া হৃদয়কে জিজ্ঞাসা করিলেন যে এই ব্যক্তির কি কোনো প্রকার রোগ যোগ করার অভ্যাস আছে লক্ষণে যেন যোগীর ন্যায় বোধ হইতেছে হৃদয় তাহা স্বীকার করিল পরমহংস দেবের অবস্থা সম্বন্ধে এই পণ্ডিত সর্বপ্রথমে উল্লেখ করেন কিন্তু তাহার কথায় কোনো ফল হইল না হৃদয়ও সে কথা বুঝিল না এবং কবিরাজ মহাশয়ের তাহা তাহা ধারণা হইল না তিনি তৈল ব্যবহার করাইতে লাগিলেন আজ এই পর্যন্ত শেষ করছি আগামী সপ্তাহে আমরা অষ্টম পরিচ্ছেদ শুরু করব এখন সরাসরি অর্কের কাছে চলে যাব ধন্যবাদ অনেক ধন্যবাদ সুজিত আমরা খুব সুন্দর শুনছিলাম শ্রীরামকৃষ্ণের জীবনী এবং শ্রীরামকৃষ্ণের মায়ের প্রতি ভালোবাসা এবং জগৎকে তিনি প্রকৃতিকে কিভাবে দেখছেন শক্তির উৎস হিসেবে এবং কিভাবে জ্ঞান করছেন তাদের কথা অনেক ধন্যবাদ সুজিত আগামী দিনে শুনব শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণের এইসব অসাধারণ কীর্তি বাইরে থেকে মানুষ এসে ঠাকুর বলছেন যে আমি যে যে মায়ের সঙ্গে কথা বলছি তা আমাকে লোকে বলে পাগল তো এটি কি ভ্রম তো এই হচ্ছে জগতের চোখে শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণ আবার শ্রী রামকৃষ্ণের চোখে জগৎ আমরা দেখব আগামী দিনে কত সুন্দর এইসব ব্যাখ্যা সুজিতকে আবার ফিরে যেতে হবে সেই স্ক্রিন শেয়ারিং এ অসাধারণ ভাবে সুজিত আমাদের পরিচালনা করছে আমাদের ভাবটি আরো গভীর হচ্ছে আর সময় নষ্ট না করে ডাইরেক্টলি আমরা চলে যাব সোহেলের কাছে সোহেল বেদান্ত থেকে পড়ছিল অদ্বৈত বেদান্ত স্বামীজির প্র্যাকটিক্যাল বেদান্ত আমরা শুনছি এবং আমরা অদ্বৈত বেদান্তের একদম ভেতরে চলে গেছি প্রবেশ করে গেছি আজকেও আমরা অনেক কিছু শিখব জানব সোহেলের কাছ থেকে সোহেল গুড মর্নিং এভরিওয়ান থ্যাংক ইউ অর্কজ্যোতি Uh, we are reading from Vedanta, Voice of Freedom. And the last day, what I read was the analysis of perception. And to explore a little bit into this, uh, how Arpojati today 
beautifully mentioned or uh, beautifully clarified the doubt of science that how the things that is happening now are affecting us and how we can overcome that now i want to make few points on this that whatever we fear this fear is actually our own perception of what is happening now fear is not real what is real real is the danger the danger of this pandemic is real but to fear out it it is totally under our control we can fear it or we can overcome it so it is very uh, right to say that to overcome this danger we have to be fearless and how to be fearless that is how orko said that we have to prepare our mind we have to uh, prepare our mind strong to then or any sort any sort of thing that will help us to overcome this fear and we will be stronger from within and once we can be stronger from within then we can we will not be actually uh, what i say we will not be actually subdued by the outward uh, outward circumstances we can control our own feeling by through by making ourselves stronger than the causes so this is what i had to add here that the danger is real but the fear is not real fear is what we make of ourselves so today i will uh, read further from the second chapter today i will start about the good and evil in this world we find that all happiness is followed by misery and its shadow life has its shadow that etc they must go together because they are not contradictory not two separate existence but different manifestation of the same unit life and death sorrow and happiness good and evil the dualistic conception that good and evil are two separate entities and that they are both going on internally eternally is absurd on the face of it they are the diverse manifestation of one and the same fact one time appearing as bad and another time as good the difference does not exist in kind but only in degree they differ from each other in degree of intensity we find as a matter of fact that the same nerve system carry good and bad senses and alike and when the nerves are injured neither sensation come to us the same phenomenon will produce pleasure in one and pain in another the eating of meat produces pleasure in man but the pain in animal that is it in there has never been anything that gives pleasure to all alike some are pleased other are displeased so on it will go the history of the world shows that evil as well as good is a continuous increasing quantity take the lowest man he lives in the forest his sense of enjoyment is very small and so also his power to suffer his misery is entirely on the sense of pain if he does not get plenty of food he is miserable but give him plenty of food at freedom to rove and to hunt and he is perfectly happy his happiness consists only in the senses and so does his misery go but if that man increases in knowledge his happiness will increase also and intellect will open to him and his sense of enjoyment will evolve into intellectual and a mathematical problem sorry intellectual and enjoyment he will feel pleasure in reading beautiful poem and a mathematical problem will be of absorbing interest to him but with this the finer nerves will become more and more susceptible to the miseries of the mental pain of which the savage does not think take your country england which is the richest in the world and which is more luxurious than any other and see how intense is the misery how many more lunatics you have compared with other races only because the desires are so keen vedanta does not take the position that this world is only a miserable one that would be untrue at the same time it is a mistake to say this world is full of happiness and blessings so it is useless to tell children that this world is all good and flowers all milky and honey which is way all have dreamt of at the same time it is erroneous to think that because one man has suffered more than another all is evil 
it is this duality this play of good and evil that makes our world of experiences at the same time vedanta says do not think that good and evil are two are two separate existences for they are one and the same thing appearing in different degrees and in different guises and producing different of feeling in the same mind so the first thought of vedanta is finding of unity in the external the one existence manifestation itself however different it may appear each manifestation think of the old theory of the persian two god creating this world the good god doing everything that is good and the bad one everything bad on the very face of it you see the absurdity for if it is carried out every law of nature must have two parts one which is manipulated by one god and he goes away and the other god manipulates the other part there are difficulty come both the working in the same world and these two god help keep themselves in harmony by injuring one portion and doing good to another this is a crude case of course and crudest way of expressing the duality of existence but take the more advanced and the more abstract theory that this world is partly good and partly bad this also is absurd arguing that the same standpoint it is the same force that gives us our food and kills many through accidents or misadventure we find then that this world is neither good nor evil it is a mixture of both and as we go on we shall find that the whole blame is taken away from nature and put upon our own shoulders at the same time vedanta shows the way out but not by denial or evil because it is boldly analyzes that fact as it is and does not seek to conceal anything it is not creed of hopelessness it is not agnosticism it finds out remedy but it wants to place that remedy on adamantine foundations not by shutting the child's mouth and blinding its eyes with something which is untrue and which the child will find out in a few days i remember when i was young a young man's father died and left him poorly off with a large family to support and he found that his father's friends were unwilling to help him he had a conversation with a clergyman who offered his consolation oh it's all good all is sent for your good that is the old method of trying to put a piece of gold leaf on an old stove it is the confession of weakness of absurdity the young man went away and six months afterward a son was born to the clergyman and he gave a thanksgiving party to which the young man was invited the clergyman prayed thank god for his mercy and the young man stood up and said stop this is all misery the clergyman asked why because when my father died you said it was good so apparently evil so now this is apparently good but really evil in this in this the way to cure the misery of the world be good and have mercy of those who suffer do not try to patch it up nothing will cure this world go beyond it this is a world of good and evil where there is good evil follows but beyond and behind all these manifestations all these contradictions vedanta finds all the unity it says give up what is evil and give up what is good what remains then behind good and evil stand something that is yours the real you you on every evil and be on every good too and it is that which is manifestation itself as good and bad no that first and then and then alone will you be true to optimistic and not before for then you will be able to control everything control these manifestations and you will be at liberty to manifest the real you first be master of yourself stand up and be free go beyond the pale of these laws for these laws do not absolutely govern you they are only part of your being first find out that you are not the slave of nature never were and never will be and this nature infinite as you may think of is only finite a drop in the ocean and your soul is the ocean you were beyond stars the moon and the sun and they are like mere bubbles compared with your infinite being know that you will control both good and evil then alone will the whole vision change and you will stand up and say how beautiful is good and how wonderful is evil 
that is what vedanta teaches it does not propose any strip short remedy covering up wounds with cold leaf and more the wound fester putting on more gold leaf this is life it is a hard fact work your way through it boldly though it may be adam and time no matter the soul is stronger vedanta lays no responsibility on little god for you are the maker of your own fortune you make yourself suffer you make good and evil and it is you who put your hands before your eyes and say it is dark take your hands away and see the light you are effluent you are perfect already from the very beginning we now understand the verse he who goes from death to days who sees many here see one and be free thank you thank you sohal i think uh, we were wrapped in attention in listening sohal words as if swami vivekananda was speaking through him it was so much force it has i think sohal also felt that while speaking on these various issues and as sohal uh, before starting the book as he said to be fearless that is swami vivekananda says that is the key swami ji says that if anything coming out of upanishads like bomb that is fearlessness until we become fearless actually we can't be spiritual in that sense fear comes from the little ego when we let go this little ego when he as so so sohel has been uh, reading from this lecture in deep we have seen the play of the good and evil and how i am beyond that i think sayan also got today many answers from deepest philosophies of vedanta uh, as sohel was reading along with his answers to sayan i think uh, abhi is the sanskrit word fearlessness uh, for fearlessness what swami ji uh, so in swami ji's philosophy in swami ji's teachings we see this word fearless coming in almost every lecture that it is fearlessness that belongs that uh, to, to brings us heaven in one second that is what we have to reach uh, we have to let go this little ego and how uh, the the play of this good and evil uh, we do not identify ourselves with this uh, good and evil as swami ji says that it is just a version from one to other it is not, it is a temporal version jetike amra banglay apekkhik boli jetike ajke shukh bole mone hocche shetike kalkei amra dekhbo koshte porinotto hote shei jonno ei shukh ar dukho je khela তার বাইরে কিন্তু আসলে আমাদের অবস্থান সেই অবস্থানে যেন আমরা দৃঢ় হতে পারি এই কঠিন পরিস্থিতিতে এইটি প্রার্থনা করব অনেক ধন্যবাদ সোহেলকে আমরা যতদিন যাচ্ছি দেখছি স্বামীজির এই বেদান্ত কত র্যাশনাল কত প্র্যাকটিক্যাল এবং কতটা আমাদের সবাইকে একত্র করে অনুভব করাচ্ছে যে ইগনোরেন্স গুলো হয়ে গেছে সমাজে সেখান থেকে পরম সত্যে আমরা কিভাবে পৌঁছবো আমরা চলে যাব আস্তে আস্তে আমরা আমাদের শেষ প্যানেলিস্ট যা মনে হচ্ছে আমরা চলে যাব আহ অদৃজোর কাছে অদৃজোর স্বামীজির বই থেকে পড়বে পালস অফ উইজডম কিছু কোর্স স্বামীজির ইংরেজিতে অ্যান্ড আফটার লিসনিং টু অদৃশ উইল এন্ড আওয়ার মিট অদৃশ Yes, yes, you're audible. Very good morning to everybody. I will read from the, I will resume my uh, reading from Pulse of Wisdom, page number 14, Death. Uh, yes. death. Death is but a change. The human soul is eternal and immortal, perfect and infinite, and death means only a change of center from one body to another. Death means only a change of garments. Death is but a change of condition. If death comes, that is the worst of our miseries. Let it come. Death is better than a vegetating, ignorant life. It is better to die on the battlefield than to live a life of defeat. Death is the result of inaction. Death is the goal of all objectives. Change is the nature of all objective things. Death lies in the sense. Sameness is the sign of death. Democracy. More breath more opportunity for everybody. The new order of things is the salvation of the people by the people. Our masses are gods as compared with those of other countries. The one problem you have is to give to the masses their rights. Kings having gone, the power is the people's. 
It is the duty of every aristocracy to dig its own grave, and the sooner it does so, the better for all. This uh, denunciation. denunciation is never the highest. Denunciation is not at all the way to do good. Desire. Desire is without beginning. There is no limit to man's desire. He goes on desiring. And when he comes to a point when desi where desire cannot be fulfilled, the result is pain. Desire is infinite. Its fulfillment, limit it is fulfillment limited. Desire will not come unless there is something outside to fulfill it. No desire for the world. The satisfaction of desire only increases it as oil poured on fire but makes it burn more fiercely. Desire is increased by desire. Man's thirst, says the Hindu. Man's thirst, say Buddhists, is a burning unquenchable thirst for more and more. Whatever man desires, he gets. While we hope for anything, desire still rule us, rules us. There is one real desire to know what is true, to be spiritual. One desires who are constantly, uh, uh, one desi our desires also are constantly changing. What we would prize today, we would reject tomorrow. Our desires are but breads of glass. All desires is contained in the self. It is our desire that binds us. Desires make slaves of us. Desire want is the father of all misery. Desires bring all misery. Desires are bound by the laws of success and failure. It is a desireless who bring great results to pass. Thank you. So we have been listening beautifully to the quotes of Swamiji as far as death is concerned. Swamiji says how beautifully explained that death is not a thing to be feared about, rather you must fight it in the battlefield. I remember from the Bhagavad Gita when Arjuna said that uh, to Krishna that this uh, I have to fight with my kings and uh, that, that this is tremendously shocking and uh, this uh, I, I cannot I will not be able to do it. I will be killing so many lives. Then Sri Krishna says a beautiful thing to him uh, that it is it is not the particular body and mind that will kill. The Atma is beyond killing. It is beyond anything. So you cannot kill anybody in that sense. You will be only killing the body and mind for for Dharma Sthapana, for the, for the establishment of the Dharma, for the righteousness. That is the teaching, and that is the teaching in ourselves. Today, Dharma Kshetra is the COVID battleground that we are facing today. That is what Sohel says, the danger is the real. But the fear is not real because that is on us. If we create a, if we create that fear in our mind, that is in on, that is on our part. It is our trouble. That is not the trouble that is actually existing. So it is what we have to do is to become fearless, and we must cooperate how much we can with others. At least me, mental support we can give to others, which is very important, friends. With concluding note, as Swamiji says, they alone, yesterday also in our meet, I have told, they alone live, who live for others. The rest are more dead than alive, Swamiji says. In simple terminology, Swamiji even says that unselfishness is religion, what I have understood. The, it is only unselfishness that is religion. So at this point of time, even if we cannot be with anybody physically, at least morally, at least over phone, we can help others as far as we can we should do and this is what actually religion teaches irrespective of any creed any nationality any gender any religion i think that is the teaching coming out yesterday while uh, we talked about serving god in man sister nivedita i think if we just go back uh, around 100 years back 110 10 or 20 years 100 years 110 to 15 years back we have seen a great uh, uh, Kolkata was affected and whole of West Bengal was affected by plague at that time and that was a great disease and nobody nobody served anybody because all, all felt that just like Corona today that if I touch I, that would also come to me but at that time we have seen Sister Nivedita 
taking risking her life with bare hands uh, she served uh, the the old masses and uh, she put them medicine she put them food i think those are the teachings and even ramakrishna martin mission even today uh, we have seen that from various parts of the corners they are doing covid yesterday i was just watching in our facebook page i have shared from the malda ramakrishna mat malda hospital government hospital their uh, patients uh, part, uh, patients uh, members family members who have come uh, the covid uh, patients so they are suffering because they have not know where to leave the patient party so what ramakrishna mission has done is that the 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 ex students of vidya mandira college of ramakrishna mat and mission at belur which is now one of the top colleges in top 10 colleges of india Uh, the ex students they along with uh, the the, the adhyaksha of the ramakrishna mat malda uh, swami tyagarupananda ji who was the ex principal of the vidya mandira college they at night they went with food and supplements to those family members so that they can have their uh, their dinner and at least the minimum uh, fo- fooding which is actually in covid situation almost everything is off but if the patient family members if they cannot uh, stay fit how how the patient will remain fit so that is so that they keep well ramakrishna mat just i have mentioned only one yesterday sayan has given a beautiful input and ramakrishna mat is doing great work with hero company in association with hero company in making oxygen cylinders i didn't knew that i think he has come out from a it has come out from a newspaper so sayan gave that input yesterday which is very inspiring and along with that i think i think if you just go to www.belurmat.org we'll see how many relief work is being done by ramakrishna mat and mission over the year and even in this covid pandemic in the previous year we have seen and even in today we are seeing so it is an inspiration and i want to conclude that this oneness that vedanta preaches as so well uh, uh, read Uh, our goal is to reach this oneness to see god in the living man so much he says if you cannot see god in the living man where will you find god i think this is a great statement and this is the time that we have to be with others and pray for others even if we can can do anything physically we can pray for others thank you very much i end the meet over here om shante 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 hare om tat sat sri ram krishna rupa namastu